Hey, MMT followers, Christina Fugis with Mole Making Technology for another quick MMT chat because these stories keep coming in. Um, my guests today are with a group of companies that have recently turned production over to manufacture face shields. So I want you to meet Max Preston, GM for Smart Attend, and Robert Graup, GM for Intex Tooling, and both are sitting right now in Ontario, Canada. So Max, why don't you first explain, give us a little snapshot of the group that was involved in this project and how they're connected. Sure. So this, this is a this is a multifaceted group of, of tons of talents, right? So the parent company of everything is Axiom Group, and the divisions that were involved with this specific face shield project were Intex Tooling for making the mold for the face shield, uh, Axiom Plastics, which is the main production facility here in Canada, its injection molding facility, and finally Smart Attend for the technology partner for this project. Okay. All right. So before we get into the face shield project. Talk about how everybody is, like how generally is business across all those business units? And let's get into um, some of the precautions that you guys have taken to deal with the virus internally and employee morale. So talk a little bit about the state of affairs amidst the virus. Sure, I'll go first. Is that right, with that, Robert? Yeah, right so uh, with SmartAscend, we're, we're actually quite uniquely set up uh, to shift everything quite drastically simply because we're a technology company, right? So we utilize a lot of software. We utilize a lot of different uh, sharing sharing systems as well as shared drives. So we've actually been working from home coming on to you know, the end of week six and going into week seven now. So right as we started seeing the, the, the virus starting to take over, we immediately pulled the plug in the office, sent everybody home because we have a large, uh, a large gap of generations. We have some more mature personnel, some younger personnel, and my main thing was safety. So we completely digitalized the office right away. Um, got everyone working from home right away as well, and uh, it, it's been a it's been an interesting experience not coming to the office for six weeks as as, sure. as a whole. We're kind of getting a little bit of cabin fever, but uh, we're doing the best we can. How any tips for like how leadership or management has stepped in to kind of help morale? Because that what you just described is stressful, is un uncertainty, a little bit of fear. So mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah. So the. Um, What's really interesting is that I have a friend of mine, his name is uh, Jeffrey Hunt. He's the CEO of Shea Global. And him and I talk uh, several times, uh, about every two to three weeks. And he actually had a great idea, which I've implemented now in SmartAscent. So every day at 11.30 a.m., uh, we host what we call a coffee chat, right? And what that coffee chat is, no work discussion is allowed in it. It's, we all get on camera. We all, you know, if we're growing beards like I am right now, sometimes some of the guys will shave them into funny shapes just to make, uh, just to make each other laugh. Um, and we talk about movies, TV shows, everything else that we're doing. Uh, and so that's been a great way to keep morale up because obviously working from home, we're on video conferences every day, but there is still an aspect of a little bit impersonalization with it. Yes. So it's been important to me that um, we still keep each other laughing. We still focus on number one for me, which is emotional security, which is gauging the, the amount of enjoyment people have and the challenges that they run into on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and so this is one of the most important things for me is making sure that during this terrible crisis and pandemic, that we're still focusing on doing a good job and we're still keeping each other happy, motivated, and morale is an absolute focus for me right now. That's awesome. How about you, Rob? Anything to add to that in terms of Intex, particularly? Yeah, from the tooling perspective, I think it's uh, quite different than uh, what Max's business model is, and as well the production. We're we're here um, pretty well supporting injection molding facilities, and and Axiom Plastics as a as a whole is mostly automotive. So their their initial impact from the coronavirus was zero orders. Right. So we we're there. Um, following suit as support company, we instantly reduced our staff to less than one third. We're down to about a quarter of the size right now with just the key personnel supporting what we have. So it, it, it really is a, a difficult time, but I think everybody is, is thriving through. Anybody that could work remotely has been sent home and working remotely, but as tool making goes, it's really hard to, to make something that Remote you like have that. the hands on uh, component involved. So, exactly. but, uh, from a morale standpoint, uh, even the people that have been uh, put on um, government support, the, the, the social assistance program that yep. our Canadian government put in, 
um, they're still reaching out and, and asking how things are going in there. And, and they're actually getting bored sitting at home, not doing any kind of physical. I'm sure. So, but I mean, you, you take general, people that are used to using their hands, right, and doing things and put them at home 24 7, right? That's right. Yeah. But uh, no, we've, we've really been working hard to try and keep the social distancing, keeping the morale up. Uh, we still come and bring coffee to the guys and donuts and have our chat in the morning. And uh, I think. Um, the presence of ownership coming in on a regular yes. basis, supporting the team, um, as well as the, all the managers, all the key players, and the, the senior uh, tool makers are still involved on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it's mostly the, the non-essential support workers that we've um, asked to stay home uh, because there really is there is work, but there isn't work for them. Yeah, exactly. All right, so let's chat a little bit about this project. So I understand that you, from uh, chatting with Max a little bit, that you completely switched gears, right? And you're running production to make face shields. You said Intex built the mold the tool, Axiom is running production, and Smart Attend is supporting for efficiency and visibility issues. So let's talk about that. Who wants to take the lead in terms of who the project is from, how it came about, and what you're making, and, and all that? Sure. Yeah, so Robert, if you'd like to... Well, I, I, I think what what uh, initial impact was the shutdown of our our whole city of Toronto uh, and shutdown of, of Canada and as well in the U.S. When, when the government came in and said, we're locking down, um, the tool room was still functioning. We were still working on projects that we had in-house. Uh, and then they went that next layer. Um, but all through that time we we were reaching out to our government officials where we, we have ownership has a lot of connections within the government uh of ontario and and the federal government and they started asking can you guys produce ppe equipment uh we said yes they initially said we're looking for face shield suppliers we instantly within 24 hours um had a meeting had engineering involved and uh, the following day, we basically had another meeting with a concept uh, design for a face shield in play. Um, and the, the rest of it was just an instant switch. Since we were already working on a skeleton crew, um, we just had to reorganize our schedule and, and okay. just jump right into it full force. So was it whoever was working? Was it all hands on deck for that project? And other non-essential projects got kind of pushed be pushed back. That's right. Okay. So the design aspect. So you you ended up making your own design instead of I hear others are basically grabbing an existing design to get things done quicker. You did not go that route. Well, we took a face shield is pretty basic. So we right. took a, a basic face shield concept and uh, we basically made a strap and uh, a headset, which is the blue piece and a visor. Okay. But the development of the visor, the government of Ontario had some specific criteria of face coverage and uh, the length of it. And what we looked at more so was making something that was somewhat environmentally friendly. So Got that it. this is uh, PPE, this is polypropylene, you can peel the rubber away and it's fully recyclable and the, the face shield itself is polycarbonate. So this yeah. is the biggest challenger because you can't push polycarbonate very well, but we're there. We, we made it as light and efficient as possible. Um, so now this is not like the other simple ones where people grab a design and they put some glue on it and they yeah. glue an acetate on and now you've got all these materials that you can't recycle. So we really that was a, a, our design challenge to make something that was recyclable mm -hmm. and, and we've achieved that now so that, that is a lot of where the engineering went into okay. it's, Interesting. it's not a rocket science to build a face shield per se right right so what was the lead time for this wow um basically from concept including part design and product development to first off shots um, and getting it into production, it's basically three weeks. Okay, so we so, built three yeah. tools, four cavity tools, 
single cavity tool, two cavity tool. Uh, that was all done in three weeks time. Wow. And now we have another two, two more two cavities and two more two cavities of this running on the machines right now, scheduled to be finished in about 10 days. Okay. So we'll have all of that in production. And in, in a window of, let's say, four to five weeks, we've got production capabilities of about 150,000 units, almost 200,000 units a week. So, all right, give me a snapshot of Intex's like, specialty and the workforce involved, because I want to get a, an idea of how does what you just said compare to what you guys do in ordinary times? But the complexity of the mold, I get that. But like the lead times and what you are accomplishing, how does it compare with what you've got right now? Uh, the lead times were actually challenging. Just just getting a hold of the steel, um, making the phone calls. I think it's a testament to the relationship that we've built with our suppliers. Being able to pick up the phone and call PCS and ask for some mold bases and them saying, well, we don't have this plate, we have this plate, we'll substitute that in, are you okay with that? It, it, this whole COVID thing has brought in something um, in the sense that we can't physically drive there and pick up, so we're sending our courier to pick it up, and we're meeting halfway. The, the meeting point was Windsor, Ontario, so PCS okay. driving to Windsor, uh, us driving to Windsor, picking up the steel, shaking hands, driving further, and no, we weren't shaking hands. But, uh, <laughs> I was say, the, <laughs> the hand, the handoff was there. So uh, I think we were able to do this because of the relationships we built, and then we're also able to do this because of the expertise built in within the whole Axiom group, from Axiom support engineering to our tool designers that we have here that we're working on the projects remotely. Uh, we do a video conference to review the designs. Um, and then the support team that we have here of tool makers and their years of expertise just able to turn it around. And it being something new and exciting rather than that another headlamp bracket, another dashboard right. part, this is something that everybody's latched on to and they're proud to say, hey, we made a face shield and we're making a difference here within uh, our little area of Ontario, Canada. So I, I think that's what drove this project home so fast. What would you say was the number one challenge or what was, what was most stretched or tested through this project so far? Polishing. Polishing. <laughs> We normally send our polishing out. Uh, they were backlogged with other companies, uh, PPE projects, uh -huh. ventilators, face shields, uh, face masks, all of that, all of them were polishing. Interesting. So we, we actually chose to polish in-house. Okay. okay, that which brings me to the next question. So going through this, what have you learned about your people and your current processes, because you're able, it looks like a lot of shops are able to accomplish things, not that they didn't know they could, or some maybe, but you're doing stuff pretty fast um, in, in this extraordinary time. So have you learned something that you'll carry over, again, when we're in ordinary times with different projects, like eliminating a step, or like you just bring in polishing a house for the long term, like are there things that are happening, training, people? Mm -hmm. I, I, I I would say that's a, a little bit of a difficult question to answer okay. because we don't have the day-to-day -day workload that's going on right now. We were able to just switch off and focus fully on this project. So the uh, success rate, I wouldn't say it's guaranteed uh, because we didn't have any equipment failure. That would have been the, the, the nail in the wheel that made it mm -hmm. flat. But I, I think... Right. Um, the fact that we didn't have that outside noise uh, from other clients reaching in yeah. and saying, we need this in a hurry, we are able to focus and make this a success. Got yeah, it. yeah, and, and that, um, I mean, it, it was a bit of a calamity situation, you know, not only for us, but for the industry as a whole, right? right. Where, where everything ground to a screeching halt, right? And, and so what I, and I'd like to, answer a little bit part of this question but what's what's really what's really fascinating for me is once once we got word that everything was shutting down how fast everyone 
jumped on to stay, well, on, on to doing this because there is an aspect here that we're actually, we do believe that we're helping people, that we're going to be keeping people healthier. We're going to be you keeping are. people safe, right? Not in an automobile, like, like Axiom was known for before, but now in the medical industry, right? Yeah. And so before, even though we have ABG, the, the, the Mexico division of Axiom, Intex, uh, Axiom Plastics over just down the street from us right now, uh, all of the machines, all of all of the pieces of equipment are online with, with the Smart Intent system, but my team is physically standing there every single day beside the engineers or beside the press, beside the tool makers like Robert and his team, and, and seeing a technology company come in and provide as much support as we possibly could, even though it's not the area that we play in at, you know, most of the time, we're still there looking at efficiencies, looking at, you know, root cause analysis so much faster. Than, than what was physically possible before, simply because this is now, you know, the big guns of every division are coming in, yeah. and that's how we achieve this in such a fast amount of time. And it's so that part's really, really neat to see how, how we've all come together, even if it's not our primary area of, uh, of our jobs. Exactly. Is, do you see that area, the medical space, something you want to expand into further than this? Absolutely, yeah, um, and, and for a number of reasons. The, the biggest reason for me, uh, and from what I've seen, you know, watching the economy and how the deficit's been growing, you know, watching the attitudes um, that yeah. each government, state, provincial, um, you know, federal, both in America and Canada, how they focus on the supply of PPE locally, right? And yeah. how a lot of the issues that North America is running into is simply because we just had none onshore. It was a completely offshore um, commodity, right? Yeah. Uh, and so we've actually taken steps to to look beyond just the space shields. We've already had multiple discussions right, right from week number one, which is this is exciting. We're all on this thing. We're really geared up to do this properly. But what's going to happen after? That's yeah. that's the exciting piece. And so we we've already purchased the you know the domain names that we have to called actingppe.com. Website will be online uh, on Monday actually. Um, okay. giving more details about the face shield. And, and even from after that, this isn't the end. This is only the beginning. So it's interesting, too. I was just, you know, you're familiar with the Canadian Association of Mold Makers. So I got their recent yes. survey, how they're surveying members every week. And I don't, call me naive, I wasn't thinking this way, but with as soon as people start to ramp back up, the workers go back, there is a, sh the number one thing from that report this week was that there's a shortage of, the face shields and masks. So yeah. here I'm thinking things are going to be getting better. We're not going to need that equipment as much. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. As we ramp back up, that's going to be required to get back to work. So this is just going to be ongoing for quite some time. Yep. So it's a it, good thing other shops that yeah. aren't typically in this space are getting in it to help solve the problem that's yet to come, right? Yeah. And what's so, even more amazing to me, Christina, sorry to, to interrupt <laughs> one more time, what I love is the cooperation across both Canada, Mexico, United States, how each country and even each industry professional, as you know, many of them as, along as well as I do, how everyone's supporting one another. I've received um, just endless calls from people that I've met over the years um, just saying, hey, you know what, we're here to support. If you guys need anything from us, you know, just pick up the phone, let us know. And we've offered that right back to everybody else. It's really actually quite heartwarming to see, although both countries are, are in completely, um, you know, different lockdown. different lockdown states, right? right? right. Um, I mean, I, I've gotten calls from, from Florida, Chicago, from um, Guadalajara and Mexico, from BC, British Columbia, Alberta, and it's right. really neat to see how the cooperation across each country is really pulling together and, and actually supporting one another instead of locking down even further. Yeah, I love it. I agree with you. So lastly, mm -hmm. How do you guys, either one of you or both of you, see mold making emerging from this crisis in terms of what the actual business of mold making will look like? Any insight on that? Well, that's a that's a tough question, and that mm -hmm. brings in the diversification aspect of are we going to build more PPE products and develop that? We, we have always quoted and built some small injection molds to support medical devices for other molders as a tooling shop and a tooling division of Axiom. Um, but we looked at it that basically our faucet was turned off by being um, vested only in automotive as our core business. Um, and the owner and myself sat down one day 
uh, at the end of the day after discussing a face shield. And I said, you know, Perry, we need to look at this as a long-term thing, not a now thing. Um, this is the opportunity for all of our groups to make an impact. And if you look, the cars went by the wayside and the medical came in. And it's more on the humanitarian side of things that we're trying to develop this and develop a better face shield and, and bring our expertise into not just the transportation industry, but to support the world on this. Mm -hmm. um, like Max has across the board, um, seeing people from the States reaching out. Um, I also have people in Europe reaching out to me and asking can they get face shields hmm. um, so it, it's become a global thing um, but the business pulling out from an automotive perspective which is um, the majority of injection mold making in north america percentage the, the biggest percentage i think that's that part is really going to suffer and the yeah. medical molders are going to come online i don't know how the business climate is going to look um, I, I can only say from the quotation perspective, I'm getting 10 to 15 quotes a day for medical <laughs> and one for automotive. So if that go. answers how it's going to look um, pulling yeah. out of here, it's, it's looking on the medical side of things rather than on the automotive, automotive. side of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, do, I do have a perspective on that. I was talking to somebody. I've been asking different shops about this. So some people are saying in automotive with the vaccine could be a year, 18 months out, depending on who you talk to. Mm -hmm. There could be a pocket of people or a group of people that don't typically invest in cars that are still going to be afraid, though, to get in buses, Ubers, cabs, trains. That might be a new group that will want cars. Mm -hmm. Isn't For that sure. an interesting yeah. perspective? I never thought of that before. It's like, huh, that maybe will help yeah. the automotive industry. Yeah, and you know, um, even from from my perspective, I, I I read a report where once Wuhan lifted the initial lockdown before they re before they put them back on again, automotive sales actually hit a record high for that yeah. because this is this is quite a unique. Um, circumstance because a lot of people although now it's a bit different this was back probably four weeks ago where people had money they just couldn't yes. physically go anywhere right? right um but even from my perspective how the mold making industry specifically i think is going to change uh is it, going to be the aspect of all of the labor that's been laid off are they going to return right um that's a it's an initial concern for me of course because of one thing our unemployment both canada and united states is skyrocketing into yes. unforeseen levels right now, right? Um, and it's going to take a lot of work to to bring that back down. But even for us, we have to we have to you know operate within that same climate ourselves, right? So yeah. we we've we've changed significantly our product development direction for the next year at Smart Attend to to be able to, for two things: one, for our customers now in the mold making industry to do self installation because we can't travel anywhere, right? right? It's been yeah. a very big aspect of our business that we've had to circumvent. And number two, also beginning to offer systems and services that are even further automated in the, guy, in the sense that machines don't necessarily get laid off. They'll always still stay there. And once everything returns back to normal, we don't know if there's going to be the same amount of employees returning to every workplace as there was in the past. Yeah. So we have to be able to allow not only our customers, but any new customers coming in to, to operate with an effective system to allow them to manage the shop floor without any manual input from anybody, right? I if like that, that strategic thinking. That's what needs uh, to be yeah, I wish, do. You know, I, I, I'm a huge believer in never, never using the smart attend system as a direct uh, way to be big brother or, right. uh, you know, to come down on people, right? Um, right. But I will say that I am, I, I do have concerns over people's livelihoods once this is all over. And, and unfortunately, as a general manager of a technology division, I have to drive the product development into that direction. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, economics is economics, right? That's exactly right. That's the bottom line. Well, yeah. thank you both for your time. I think the, the end game yeah. is I'm trying to focus these stories on lessons and opportunities, and you just laid out a whole bunch that you are learning from this experience, and that's positive to me. So kudos to you, and thank you for what you guys are doing out there, your teams pulling together and your suppliers. Say that URL again, um, Max, for the Sorry, the URL again? 
Yeah. Yeah. So it's axiompppe.com. A X I O M P P E, like Edward, dot com. Okay. And, and that I'm sure by the time I get this edited and up online, it's already going to be active. So everybody make sure you check that out. And remember, for everything mold making, visit moldmakingtechnology.com. Stay safe and stay healthy.